Based on a single ayah, verse in the Quran, a huge and extremely dangerous political and religious confrontation between Arabs and Jews can explode into war once again. Will you explain the background and ramifications of this very volatile issue? I always like to make our listeners aware of facts that are not common knowledge to most people, whether so-called believers or unbelievers. That there is no mention in the Quran of the Temple of Jerusalem nor of the name Jerusalem. That every single encounter by Muhammad with the angel Gabriel, who was allegedly revealing the Quran to him, was never witnessed by either his wives nor by any of his companions. All we have, and all they ever had, are Muhammad's unverified and unsubstantiated assertions that he did. On the one hand, every single miraculous encounter of Muhammad occurred in the dead of night without any witnesses. On the other hand, the miracles that Moses performed were witnessed by the whole of the Israelite and Egyptian peoples in broad daylight. I shall address this subject linguistically and historically. Now I shall recite the single verse in the Quran upon which an incredible myth was created, the results of which reverberate 1,400 years later in the 21st century. Surah Al-Isra 17.1 Glory to Allah who did take his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque, whose precincts we did bless in order that we might show him some of our signs, for he is the one who heareth and seeth all things. سُبْحَانُ الَّذِي أَسْرَ بِعَبْدِهِ لَيْلًا مِنَ الْمَجْدِ الْحَرَمِ إِلَى الْمَجْدِ الْأَقْصَى الَّذِي بَارَكْنَ حَوْلَهُ لِنُرِيهِ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْبَصِيرُ The claim by the followers of Muhammad for Jerusalem as their third holiest place is founded on the interpretation of this verse. Are these interpretations true, factual, or historical? Surah Al-Isra 17.2 We gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel, commanding, take not other than me as the disposer of your affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no indication as to where the Masjid al-Aqsa is. Neither is there any word or expression assuming a miraculous event. It is a simple statement that Muhammad was taken on a journey from Mecca to an undisclosed holy destination. Based entirely on this verse, it is impossible to connect this alleged event to any point on earth, let alone Jerusalem. Moreover, the very next verse jumps from the 7th century AD to the 15th century BC of Moses without batting an eyelid, although the two subjects have absolutely no relevance to each other. If the event mentioned above were truly miraculous, there would have been more verses to follow extolling and elaborating upon the subject. Nothing of the kind can be found in the Quran. No mention of Burak, of Gabriel, of meeting previous prophets, of seven heavens, or of Jerusalem. Al-Isra 17.104 And we say thereafter to the children of Israel, Dwell securely in the land, uskunu al-arda. Al-A'raf 7.137 And we made the people considered weak and of no account, inheritors of land, al-ard, in both east and west lands, whereon we send down our blessings. The fair promise of the Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel because they had patience and constancy. By both east and west lands, the Quran affirms the biblical narrative that assigned the promised land among the twelve tribes of Israel on both sides of the river Jordan. Al-Rum 30.6 It is the promise of Allah. Never does Allah depart from His promise. Since Allah never departs from His promise, how then can the Muhammadans assert that he has done so in the case of the Promised Land. Are they reinterpreting the Qur'an to suit their agenda? But this is blasphemy. The next verse is of extreme importance, since it reveals the fallacy of the adjective furthest. Al-Rum 30.2 The Roman Empire has been defeated in a land close by. Abdullah Yusuf Ali, the translator of the Qur'an, explains very clearly the meaning of these verses and says, the remarkable defeats of the Roman Empire under Heraclius were not merely isolated defeats. The defeat in a land close by must refer to Syria and Palestine. Jerusalem was lost in 614-15 AD, shortly before the surah was revealed. If in a land close by is Palestine, Syria, how could the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem be the furthest mosque? After all, Muhammad's mosque was in Medina 
and no others are mentioned in the Quran. How can the same point on earth, Jerusalem, be both the furthest and near? This event presumably occurred just before Muhammad migrated to Medina in 622 AD. For the next 150 years, no one ever connected the night journey to Jerusalem or anywhere else for that matter. Once again, there was no mention of Burak, Gabriel or Jerusalem. Then enters Muhammad ibn Ishaq and his biography of Muhammad called Sirat Rasulullah, page 181, section The Night Journey and the Ascent to Heaven. Ibn Ishaq admits that he patched together assorted stories regarding an alleged miraculous journey that Muhammad had on an animal called Burak to Jerusalem, then the seven heavens and back to Mecca in one single night. This became one source among others of the worst case of deceptions and contortions of facts, history and religion propagated by the hadiths that had ever been perpetrated upon the human consciousness since the beginnings of recorded history. It is upon these unfounded and unsubstantiated lies that the Arabs and the followers of Muhammad lay their claim upon Jerusalem.